Hey everyone, thanks for viewing. Uh, in this lesson we're going to start designing the organizational unit structure of our new domain controller we installed if you are continuing on from the, the last video I guess. Um, in this video I'm going to go through the best practices for kind of designing your organizational unit structure. So to get to there, to get to the uh, where you want to go to create these objects is in your start menu. Uh, you can go to administrative tools and then click on active directory users and computers and you'll get the active directory users and computers snap in and from here um, is where you can start walking down the tree of your structure so saved queries, uh, we'll get into making those once we actually populate our our domain here. And then, so next you want to uh, expand your your domain, whatever you called it. So we called ours testdomain.net. So when you expand it, you get these default containers uh, that are created by Active Directory when you install the service. So this built-in container, this this container contains all the objects that are used for domain controllers only so you couldn't use these any of these groups for anything other than servicing your domain controller uh, your computers container this is where the default container for computer objects an active directory refers to everything as an object so you got users organizational units uh, computers printers those are all considered objects in active directory so this computers container is where all your computers will be uh, inputted first and then you can move them from here into another uh, organizational unit. It's best practice to change this and uh, we are going to change where computers get installed by default <clears throat> but in this video we're just going to design the structure here. Uh, you got your domain controllers this is an organizational unit it's not a container so the difference between the container and the organizational unit visually is if you look at the folder here you can see this little additional icon inside of the folder that indicates an organizational unit now the main difference between these two a container and an organizational unit is that you cannot apply group policy to a container so you cannot apply any type of restrictions to any one of these containers here only this container here which by default there is a default domain controllers uh, policy and this just stores your your domain controllers. So if we had a secondary or other domain controllers, they would populate here by default. And then your users tab down here. This is just a default uh, again, just like the computers. This is a default users container. Uh, these groups can be used throughout the domain. So, like for your administrators, you would want to probably put them in a group of domain admins um, you know domain computers you would want to have them in uh, maybe maybe enterprise admins who knows if they're that you know if they're that uh, high level but moving on so now that you kinda get an understanding of the main uh, containers here we're gonna go ahead and start creating some organizational units now there's just a couple things to keep in mind here you have a couple different ways you can go about creating this. Um, for instance, you have to look at at your design and the company you're designing for. If they have one central location, so let's just say they're all located in uh, Toronto, Ontario. They got the one store. They don't have any branch offices. Well, for a design like that, you can create either uh, department levels so you can have like uh, the accounting department the management department you know the shipping and receiving department 
whatever type of company you're working for, you can design them by departments. And then inside of each department, you can put another organizational unit called users and then another one called workstations just to separate the two. So that's one way of looking at it. Or you can have um, just one big list if you really want to. Make one organizational unit for users, not this default one because you can't apply group policies to it. But make one for users, workstations, and then another one for groups because you're going to want to have groups. And uh, the purpose of groups is you want to have your users put into a group and then that group is applied permissions for something. So that's how it should be done. You can ask yourself a simple question too like, hey, how many people have access to this folder? Well, if you have to open up the access list and look and have to read off 50 usernames individually, then you're doing something a little wrong in your uh, design. You should be able to say, oh, the management group and the finance group, they're allowed access to the folder. So, uh, and lastly, you can have a company that spreads out geographically. So by that way, you can set up your organizational units here by country or province or state, what, whichever the case may be. So in our little scenario, we're just going to have a single company and they're going to be called the testers, let's say. Okay. And it's going to be the headquarters. So the testers headquarters. Okay. So you can hit OK. So now you see we've created our first organizational unit by right clicking up here on the domain and going to new and then selecting organizational unit. And then you just simply input the name and then you hit OK. So now that we've created our, our hierarchy here of our organizational unit, you're going to want to start putting all your sub OUs inside of this testers OU. So this way here, if you have group policies and you want them to always be a part of your company, every user is affected by it, you can apply them right to this organizational unit. So from here, if you wanted to add more, like departments, you would right click, go to new, and go to organizational unit. Then from here, we can type in, um, well, we'll do the most important one, information technology and then we can click on the testers HQ again right click and go new and go organizational unit go management hit enter or press OK and you can continue doing this until you have fulfilled your department level so get all your departments listed here I'm only gonna do a few um, so right now we got our information tech, our management, our sales, and our agents. So inside of each department now, you want to create two more organizational units. Some might have a little more, like for agents, uh, we can have, like, oops, out bound calling and let's say inbound so that's just the two different styles of agents we're gonna have working for our, our company here so these agents are gonna be calling customers and trying to you know get services and these are the lucky people who are going to have to be listening to everyone bitch and complain about their services. And they're going to have different uh, policies. You know, they're going to be able to allow to use phones to dial out. These guys can only accept dial in, you know, so stuff like that. And then you can make another one uh, for just the workstations. It's not a good practice to label your organization's computers. So use workstations or I see some people use clients. 
but I find clients kind of get confusing with actual people clients. So now our agents is done and our information tech, they might have some different levels of uh, organizational units. So they're, they're going to have a management. Well, management. And they're going to have maybe a level one admins or we'll just use help desk and they might have their programmers who are going to obviously need a lot more access than the help desk and then we can make another one just generic for our service accounts So now our uh, technology, our IT department is done. And then we can do the same thing with management and sales, put users and computers, but I won't bore you with that. So now that we have our departments, we're going to want to make another one for our servers that are going to store all of our servers. So we can make an organizational called servers. And then again, we can branch down and go like SQL. Let's say we have an SQL server. Uh, we can go exchange and definitely a couple file servers okay and you can again keep expanding this for as many servers as you need and then you should make uh, one more organizational unit called groups And this is what's going to hold the groups for the company. So again, in groups, you would create your department level. So management. For agents, you can just make the one group for agents. There's not going to be that many group policies applied to the different agents. Uh, your sales. and uh, IT and again you can uh, go down maybe one more in the IT if you want to get uh, really gra granular with your uh, permission settings so you can put like a uh, help desk it's up to you that's that's your choice it all depends on how many groups we're going to be creating <clears throat> but for now that's that's what they say is the best practice in creating your organizational unit don't go too deep don't just think of organizational units to imply and build and create just keep it as simple as you can uh, they say actually best practice is between like three and five layers never go more than 10 layers so no, don't go more than like 10 deep here and uh, you should always start off with your your main company I always go by the company I just make an organizational unit up with the company name and then we can start branching off from there and then you can start populating populating them with users and then putting those users into groups um, so I'm going to go through all the, the, the different ways of adding users, like through a CSV file, uh, PowerShell, manually doing it, and the benefits of creating a template in the next video. So uh, I believe this is pretty much all I want to cover in this video. I don't want to make them too, too long. So we got our organizational unit structure built out here. Uh, it's good. It's good practice we got going on. Um, like I said, you have the option of either, well, in our case, we only have the one branch. So we, we have them just listed here in departments. Or like I said, you can go by province or it, there's really no boundary to your domain. It's just a logical, it's just a logical grouping of everything that can be administered by, you know, the administrator of this domain. So you right now, creating this 
you're the top dog of your whole domain. So you can have 10,000 people working throughout the whole world and you can just go to their account and delete it and that person won't have any access to nothing regardless of where he is in the world. So don't think of it as it's just a small kind of area that you got to cover. All right, so again, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos. You know, please rate and subscribe if you've enjoyed this or if it's helped you. And uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment at the bottom and I'll be gladly to answer them. Thank you.